Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is the same as usual. Trying to understand the logic and the mentality of the Muslims and how they explain their cult to us. Um, and today I'm going to read for you an article written by Muslims. And the title of the article is Four Reasons Make Us uh, to Convert to Islam. Now, I have a link for this article in case you want to read it uh, in details by yourself. You see, always we share uh, so people, they can get the whole image and we are not misquoting or saying something is not there, you know. So the whole point of this, when a Muslim, he make an article, the question is, uh, what is the purpose of this article? Is it to explain something to me I don't understand? Uh, is it to tell me uh, something about something, let us say... Um, uh, people they think it's wrong but it's right or what the purpose of the article we will read together and see what is exactly the Muslims try to accomplish by writing those articles in the same time it's very important you know uh, when anyone write about anything to examine how truthful what this person is saying it's very important because you know not everything you see in the internet is a truthful and I think uh, all of you are mature enough to know this already. It's not like uh, I'm telling you a news you don't know. In the internet, uh, you know, everybody can say whatever he wish. And the point is how you can prove it for me. So in front of us here, we have an article, as you see, and they have a, uh, what it looked like a European woman, and maybe she is a convert Muslim. Uh, using her image to uh, tempt you and make you believe Islam is good specifically for women Convert to Islam always a person to achieve God's love for loving his guide to life The Quran and the authentic teaching of the Prophet Muhammad. I'm so happy that they said that so what Islam is Islam is uh, the Quran and the authentic teaching of the Prophet Muhammad but what I find it funny, it says here, converting to Islam allow the person to achieve God love by following his guide to, lie, to life. I mean, I don't see Muslims achieving anything except the bloodshed everywhere. In the last week, if you go right now and search in Google, how many suicide bombing happened in the name of Allah? How many school was burned in Afghanistan? By the way, the Muslims these days in the last uh, almost nine months, they are targeting schools in Afghanistan and Pakistan and the reason for that those schools are not teaching about Allah as they accept they, they are teaching it's a Muslim school but just because they don't teach the way they want they will burn them we kill the students uh, so achieving the God we and what he did they inserted the word love by following his God mm, that's interesting soon we will show you how you can achieve God uh, many articles explain how it's easy to convert to Islam and here I have a question why it's so easy to convert to Islam I mean this is a really stupid statement to say why so easy and uh, as long you just admit it is so easy to convert to Islam why is so hard to leave Islam and hard here I'm not saying hard because you don't want to leave but Muhammad he says I remember the Muslim they agreed in the same article that Islam is based in the Quran and uh, uh, the, uh, the Hadith. In both in the Quran and the Hadith, uh, it's speaking about the one who is apostate should be killed. Uh, Muhammad he said, as an example, من بدل دينه فقتلوه. The one who changed his religion kill him okay so it's very easy to convert to Islam but if you want to leave Islam we kill you uh, so it one way access you try to leave now I wonder here what is the love of Allah I mean it's just a second ago in the article you were saying to me achieve the love of Allah Allah is so loving to the point if you don't want to be praying to him he executed you immediately by what by the hand of the Muslims if you go in the Quran we will find the, the Muslims 
believe that it's the duty of the Muslims for Allah he cannot punish anyone to kill you and torture you if we go here and as you see I always I don't make speeches you know I show people what is written in the Quran uh, not uh, what I um, you know I say it's not my statement chapter 9 verse number 14 mm, interesting the love of Allah remember remember in the article they were saying to us achieving the love of Allah let us see the love of Allah what is that I mean how you can achieve God love and God here supposed to Allah mm -hmm. how we can achieve that love ah, interesting read with me carefully chapter 9 verse number 14 and you can read any translation you wish I mean you don't like Yusuf Ali we jump to Shakir to Bakhtal to Mahsen Khan all of them are a bunch of scammers none of them is the translation is accurate but I'm using them because it's a Muslim translation. If I translate, they will say, okay, he is a change in the meaning. So which one you want, Muslims? Anyone in the text want to choose one? Pick up one. Pick up one. Pick up one. All right? All right. Please, guys, invite your friends because for some reason, Google is giving wrong timing. I scheduled it for now, but it's giving like it's not even going to start. So many people did not receive the notification for the broadcast. So please invite your friends and uh, let us uh, get people here. Let us start with Yusuf Ali. Fight them and Allah will punish them by your hands. If, 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 if. Cover them with shame. What? And that, when you fight them and kill them, that will heal the breast of the believers. I mean, do you even see how much hate in the breast of the believers? To the point that hate will not be healed unless you cut the head of somebody and shed his blood. And this is supposedly achieving the love of God and the way to live peacefully. Islam means submission, brother. The submission, you submit willingly. So why you want to kill them? You see how they like to see, you know, everyone, every donkey who says to you, Islam means submission, there's one of two things. Either he's trying to fool you or he himself, he have no idea what he's talking about. Islam never meant to be submission and the Quran is full of verses showing that. Islam is about to surrender. Muhammad, he sent letters to the three kings saying, Aslam, Taslam, surrender or I will kill you surrender you will be safe so and we can show tons of verses in the Quran and here we go in front of you fight them and fight them here is now you know the word in Arabic is qatilu qatilu is not like fight them by boxing or talking fight the uh, qatilu is coming from the word kill the word kill in Arabic uqtul qatala qatilu is an order for a group of people if you have a three and more you say qatilu so qatilu those people and Allah he will punish them by your hands no Allah why Allah what what kind of God this God he cannot punish us by his hand I mean why he need a Abdul to commit suicide bombing because Allah is a fake God if Allah is a true God he can punish any one of us including me I mean what a stupid religion Muhammad he is trying his best to seduce you tempt you to go and die for his sake but he is the last one to to be in the front line if you go oh if you go and read about all the wars happen you will see Muhammad the coward is always hiding behind when they throw rocks at Muhammad and they broke his teeth the up ones the, and the down the, he lost all his almost his all his teeth Muhammad is cr starts screaming like a baby Ilaya, Ilaya, come to me come to me help me you know and he did not fight he did not att attack even the one attacking because he's a coward so he always he hide between either the legs of Aisha or the, the donkey he ride and when the risk come he run away he put Ali ask any Muslim they will tell you when the Prophet he run from Mecca he asked he put his cousin Ali who was nine years old in the bed and covered him so he can escape mm, hold on I mean how cowardly this behave is to risk if this is true if this is a story is it true that Muhammad the, the Arab they want to kill him the tribe of Quraysh his tribe they want to kill him and then I ask a child to sleep in my bed and I cover him by the blanket so they will think it's me 
Are you telling me that Muhammad the coward is risking the life of nine years old, the child who have no idea what's happening, by making him sleep in the bed, so the Arab they will open the door in the in the room of Muhammad and they will put their sword in the dark on him and they will think this is Muhammad? This is how coward Muhammad and Muslims are so proud about him. And Allah is coward too. Allah, He cannot punish us. So Allah will punish you by your hands. This is why you see a Muslim Abdul from ISIS. When he kill, when he do any harm to, to a human being, what he say? Read with me carefully. For Allah is a Satan, and Satan, he don't want you to feel guilty when you kill a human being. Because, you know, human being by nature, God gave him, uh, you know, he feel like, you know, you feel that you are doing wrong. You feel that shaving is, you know, like a, a, a slaughtering someone, shading blood is wrong. Uh, even when you, you, you slaughter a chicken, you don't feel good, you know. Uh, Look what Allah in the Quran said. Supposedly the one is talking, remember Allah, this is not a Christian prince and this is not Muhammad. This is Allah himself, the God who we want to seek his love by. We want to achieve, achieve God love. Oh, I feel like I'm, I'm crying now. Amazing. This is amazing realism, brother. Very amazing. So how we can achieve God love? فَلَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُمْ وَمَا رَمَيْتُ إِذَا رَمَيْتُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى What does that mean? This is a very dangerous, filthy, filthy statement. Look what Muhammad, he made the Muslim believe. In order to make a Muslim not to feel guilty for killing innocent people, because all the wars Islam has have nothing to do with defending themselves. You see the Muslim, they say we defend ourselves. It's a big fat lie. Muhammad, he sent the three letters. He sent his own messenger to Caesar, or let us say the ruler of the Roman, saying to him, convert or else. And you can search it right now. And he, Muhammad, he is the one who seduced his men by attacking the Roman to get the blonde girls. And yesterday, actually, with the brother Amir and the rest of uh, uh, two days ago, uh, we talk about that. And I, by the way, just to remind you, uh, today, uh, around 8 o'clock, uh, I'm not sure of the exact time, uh, me and Amir and his brother and, uh, you know, a bunch of guys, we will be together, we will do live broadcasting. Uh, so don't forget to join us. Actually, I put a link for his page down there, so you can click on it because we are going to use mostly, I'm not sure if I'm going to do my broadcast. Uh, I might just do it in his channel. Um, uh, we will do a broadcast. It's going to be in English and German in the same time, if you are interested. Uh, so remember, when I say 8 p.m., I'm talking about Germany time. For right now, I am in Germany, as you know. Uh, so what this, what this verse is saying here, let us read together and see how ugly this cult is. <clears throat> It is not you who slew them. Okay, who then? Who? It was Allah. Ooh. You see how filthy this religion, satanic? You see, now a Muslim, when he slaughter you, he mentioned this verse. Why is that? It's disclaimer. It's not me who slew you, it's Allah. We showed you the verse before it says, Qatiluhum yu'adhibuhum Allahu bi'aydikum. Kill them. Allah, he punished them by your hands. Now this verse, making it even more perfect. Okay, don't feel guilty for killing, uh, you know, those people who did nothing to you. What, you know, you see them in those things. They say to you that always Islam defend itself. I challenge the Muslim to show me what, what? The Christians who live in Mecca or al Medina or they call them Nasara, what they did to Muhammad? Nothing. Actually, the Christians are the first one who gave refuge to Muhammad in Ethiopia. That's the fact. Muhammad, he ran all the way to Ethiopia, to the land of the Christians, and they gave him, they grant him refuge. What Muhammad did in return? He killed all the Christians in the Arabian Peninsula. If we go, we will see. Uh, 
Muhammad saying the following. Muhammad, he said, if I am victorious, I swear by Allah, I'm going to expel all the Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula. Do you see how you achieve the, the love of Allah? You see, right now I am in Germany and I saw many Muslims walking in the street and most of them, they are refugee. The love of Allah versus the love of Merkel. Merkel is the counselor of Germany right now. Merkel, she said, all refugee are welcome. And Merkel is not really, uh, I mean, she is a shish kebab. She is not really a good Christian or anything. But she is welcoming all the refugees. But Muhammad, not only he hates refugees, he want to kill people who own the land. I heard Messenger of Allah saying, I will certainly ex expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. Why? You see, the Muslim they speak about Islam is a religion of justice. Islam is okay. When you know, two days ago we saw an article. Uh, if you remember, I made a video about it. A Muslim saying singling a community is a racism. Singling what community is a racism. This is the logic. Okay, we'll go with it. So how Muhammad singled the community of the Christians? He want to kill them. He want to expel them, which means expel here, by the way. Is uh, you know ethnic cleansing, but the ethnic here replaced by religion. Just because you are from this faith, we kill you, we cleanse you, we clean the land from you. If you remember when I was debating uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Hisham Al Husseini, the head of the Islamic Center of Michigan, and he was a consultant for George Bush, and ABN TV, uh, you know this idiot in the beginning uh, of uh, the debate with him. He was saying, we uh, Muslims and Christians, we share a lot of things and we have harmony. We love Mary. We love Isa. Oh, all this garbage the Muslims they try to fool you with. Okay. But then when the debate started and we, we, we proceed, he said, literally, we are going to cleanse people like you. Literally. And he called me Zionist and, you know, this is the truth. Muhammad, he want to cleanse nations. The Jews are nation like us. Why you want to cleanse them? Let us say, let us say for the sake of argument, a Muslim, he will say to you, the Jews, they made the, a plan against the prophet. Hmm? But we know all what happened. And even if so, what if America right now, oh, here we go, 9-11 happened, the uh, the Taliban and the Al Qaeda and uh, you know the Muslim Abdul, they did an attack on America. What do you think of the American? They say, okay, we have to do uh, uh, cleansing for the Muslims. Do you agree with it? Here we see the hypocrisy of the Muslims. They have no problem with their prophets saying, I'm going to expel the Jew. And right now there's no there's zero Christians, and there's zero Jews who they are citizens in Saudi Arabia. In the Arabian Peninsula why because they cleansed them the same as they did the cleansing for the black African in al-Basra if you go right now you see in, in uh, during the Islamic uh, uh, actually hold on I don't want to talk about it yet I jumped there I should not jump there hold on because here uh, uh, it's, it's speak about a freedom as I saw in the article a real convert Tell his her stories and can share their uh, elation and etc. And there is even article that explain exactly how to become a Muslim. Thank you very much for telling me how to become a Muslim. I mean, this is the most stupid thing. To, exactly how to become a Muslim. All what you need to do is to say Shahada. You witness for the devil you are a Muslim. As simple as that. Many advantage are gained by converting to Islam. Really? Advantage like what? Ah, uh, let me count for you. Me as a man, the first thing will happen to me when I convert to Islam, when I go to heaven, I will, Allah will make my penis endless. And to be honest with you, I always wanted to have something like the elephant, you know, but I never thought it's going to be endless. And I mean, right now I am in Germany, but imagine I am here, but the penis, Mr. Penis is um, in Hulunulu, you know, or on the Maldives. All right, in the beach. Hmm. 
uh, imagine you are sitting in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and uh, you receive a ticket because your penis caused an accident in Stuttgart, Germany. I mean, that's amazing. That's so beautiful. I mean, you achieve a lot of things. You gained a lot of things. I mean, first, the first thing you will gain weight because endless penis, that's endless weight. Like, I don't know how, how, how heavy you will be when you have such a, you know, size uh, penis. Uh, your wife, she will be, her butt will be one mile, uh, her ass, as the, the, the hadith says, uh, you know, uh, the women, her bum, will, will, will take a size of one mile. Imagine your wife, she have a very beautiful butt to the point it's one mile. I like, amazing. I mean, you know, all of us, we like big screen TV. And now, finally, we have a wife, her butt is one mile. I mean, who can resist that? Be honest with me. What else we will gain if we convert to Islam? Every one of us would have between 80,000 women to 80,000 boys who they are naked and they are serving us in the bed in sexual way, drinking food. It's, I mean, this is gain slavery. You see, the Muslims, the funny about them, they say in the same article, let me go down a little bit. Hmm? Converting to Islam liberates a person from slavery I mean that's the most hilarious uh, uh, title ever I heard slavery Islam is the religion of slavery the first slavery in Islam you yourself are a slave to Allah you see the difference between the Christians and the Muslims are huge and there's many naive uh, people from our churches sadly they think we and Muslims we share the same thing a Muslim, when he pray to Allah, he is praying as a slave. A Christian, when he pray to God, he pray to is the Father, our Father. Our relationship with God is amazing. Their relationship with their God is a slave to a master. That, as simple as that, you know, it's a slave. You are just a slave. How you say to me that Islam liberate you from slavery when you yourself is a slave, and then you as a slave. You capture people as slaves and you sell them in the market. Go and read all the Islamic history, including the Quran. You will see all Quran approving slavery. And not only that, Muhammad, he worked hard to promote slavery. Guys, don't forget, please, to invite your friends. Uh, for some reason, we don't have many people are in the text. And the text looks like it's uh, not moving. Are we there? Are you there, guys? Wake up, please. Wake up. In order for Muhammad to uh, promote the slavery, he have to do something. Uh, maybe my uh, my screen here froze. I'm not sure. Let us see uh, what's happening. Um, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure really. Did my uh, broadcast stop? No, it's not. So it doesn't make sense. Uh, for some reason, I'm trying to watch the text in my phone, uh, but some reason it's not coming right. You know, let us see what's happening here. Okay. Uh, okay, it's working, but it looked like from my side it was not, was not working. All right, thank you, guys. So Islam liberated a person. Imagine Muhammad to promote slavery. Look what he did. You see, a Muslim, he will say to you, that do you know in Islam if you commit sin if you want to be forgiven you free a slave hmm. let us see what is that is about is it really about freeing a slave hmm. Muhammad in order to force his religion he come with a very simple rule the Muslims, they love to own slaves. And Muhammad is the first example. Bilal, the Muslim, they keep talking to us about Bilal. Bilal is a Muslim. Bilal, blah, blah, blah. Bilal, Muhammad died and the poor Bilal, he was a slave. And then Bilal, he went to Abu Bakr and he said, if you bought me for the sake of Allah, release me for the sake of Allah. And if you bought me for the sake of yourself, keep me for your sake of yourself because the real owner of, of Bilal is Abu Bakr. Uh, and he was being given as a gift to Muhammad. So uh, here we go. Muhammad is dead and still. Uh, why, why Muhammad did not release Bilal? 
any Muslim can tell us the Muslims keep making speeches about Muhammad Islam is against slavery Bilal the Bilal brother Bilal was the slave Bilal he put the table Bilal cleaned the dishes Bilal carry the stuff on his he was excuse my language I don't mean to insult this poor man uh, because I feel he's a victim at the end of the day and he was uh, forced into slavery but Bilal was the donkey of Muhammad he carry him he carry his stuff he carry his money he carry wherever Muhammad you want to go he take Bilal is the first one who called for the prayer do you know why because the white Arab man he don't want to climb in the top of the roof for him in the morning the white men are sleeping the slaves this is the job of the slaves why Muhammad don't go and call for the prayer he's the prophet isn't he should be the first one to wake up to pray to God no it's Bilal Bilal the slave read with me here carefully never should a believer kill a believer and here you will see that when Islam teach about killing is about not to kill a believer why the Quran doesn't say never a believer should kill anyone no a believer should not kill a believer all right but if it so happened by mistake all right if one so killed a believer it's ordained that he should free a believing slave why in the world you own a believing slave somebody can explain to me so only I, if I kill somebody and now I want to free myself from sin, I free a slave. I mean, isn't it freeing a slave is good anyway? Should I kill somebody? Is that a reason really to, to free a slave? So Muhammad, because he knew those Arab, they are extremely in love with slavery, and he is like them. He is the he, one of one of the title of Muhammad was Ba'i al Abid. He he buy and sell slaves. Because he knew how much they are attached to own slaves, he made it hard for them to the point says, if you kill somebody by mistake, I will force you to free a slave. And the Arabs, so please, no, we need our slaves. So we will free my slave. I will not get anyone. I will behave. If you commit sin, I will make you free a slave. Oh, no, 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 no. I will not commit sin. I will be. A, if you don't go to the prayer, I will make you. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so Muhammad, it was a penalty. This is was not to, nothing to do about freeing the slave. This is was a penalty for you for doing wrong. It is not a reward for the slave. It was a very satanic way to force Muslims to obey Muhammad. I will take your slaves from you. You see, you can keep your slaves as long as you wish. You do wrong, I will take one of your slaves. You do ten wrongs, I will take tens of your slaves. And those Muslims are crazy about their slaves. They want to own as much as they can. So when the Muslim tried to fool you, saying, he said, look, see, here you free a slave. The fact this is not about freeing slaves, this is about a penalty for the Muslims. If Muhammad, he want to free slaves, okay, show me in the Quran where it says, free a slave for no reason. I mean, just to free them. Who want to show me that? Who want to show me? Actually, if you have my books, you will see how Muhammad, how many slaves he forced them into slavery. There's a story about an owner. He decided to free his slaves in his deathbed, and he freed them. Muhammad, he heard the news that this guy in his dead, in his bed, when he's dying, he freed his slaves. Muhammad, he captured the slaves, and he divided them between the children of that man which means he put them back into slavery. So when a Muslim, he says to us, uh, we, you know, you, you feel free, you yourself, you are a slave and you are an owner of a slave and slavery in Islam is a way actually to, uh, to uh, you know, when I say to people, if you commit sin, you need to slaughter a chicken, what will happen? More chicken will be slaughtered. If I say to you, if you do this, you you uh, you have to free a slave. That's mean you have to buy a slave in order to free a slave, and that will increase and boom the market of slavery. Did did Muhammad close the market of slavery? No, people they are buying and selling, and the Muslims are the one who is buying and selling, not the infidels, not the pagan. The Muslims are the buyers, and the Muslims are the seller. So business is good.
and because he himself he buy and sell slaves and he own a lot of slaves you know if you remember the hadith where muhammad uh, uh abu Bakr he entered upon muhammad and he found a bunch of uh, uh, ethiopian women slave women uh, playing uh, um, dancing for muhammad uh, how, why those women are in the house of muhammad i mean are they like uh, coming from the circus uh, and uh, they are performing for the prophet uh, are they visiting town uh, they are belly dancers and the prophet he hired them you hey, know those are slaves who they are doing entertaining for his majesty the faith in muhammad read with me carefully please that narrated aisha that once abu Bakr came to her in the day of eid al-fitr or Eid al-Adha, while the Prophet was with her, there were two girls, singers, with her singing songs of the Ansar. All right? Two girls, they are singing. Here, the Hadith doesn't show really anything. Let us show something. Are they really just the girls? What girls? Hmm. Just to show you how Muslims they lie to you, this is why I say always be careful when you read Muslims translation. It says two girls. I mean, what two girls? It does it say really in Arabic two girls? It says Qanitani to Here it says that they are slaves. Why in Arabic did not translate the word slaves? Why did not say that? Wa indi jariyatani to Read carefully, just to show you how Muslims, they fabricate and they change the meaning from slaves, two slaves are singing and dancing for the Prophet, to two girls. وَعِنْدِي جَارِيَتَانِ تُغَنِّيَانِ بِغِنَاءِ بِوَعَاثٍ فَضَّجَ عَلَى الْفِرَاشِ etc. If we read the translation, let's read the translation. Does it say here in this one, because we changed the hadith, let's see if it's going to say slaves. Look at this. There were two girls with me singing the song of al -Bata. What? Where is the two girls? It says two slaves. Let us change different hadith, but the same story, different translation. Let us see. Hmm. This is different one. Let us see if now we will we will, the, the word slave will appear, maybe by mistake, you know. Okay, uh, there were two girls again. I mean, two girls. Those are not two girls. Uh, let us continue here. Here again, Jariyatani to Let us see a translation. Uh, here we go again, two girls, but in Arabic it says Jariyatan. You see how they fabricate the translation? So now, when you read in Arabic, you will not read in English, you will not find anywhere it says two slave girls are dancing. There's a hadith, if you have my book, about Umar ibn Khattab. He did beat a slave girl for she is covering the top of her body. Slaves in the time of Islam, they used to serve inside the house without a bra or any top, which means topless. So they go inside the house, they serve coffee or whatever you want to serve to your guest, and they are topless. The one of the slaves, she covered herself. Omar al Khattab, look how justice Islam is. He stood and he started beating her, saying, Are you trying to resemble the free one? Because only the free one covered themselves. Only the free one. Maybe many of you do not know that. In Islam, only free women they have the right to cover themselves if you are a slave you expose yourself and just to show you how ugly islam is more and more if we go in the quran when they speak about freeing yourself you are right
we saw in the case of murder here in the verse before this verse we just uh, talk about here chapter 4 verse number 92 that if you kill somebody by mistake okay well you free a slave all right which is uh, going to cause a bombing for the business a booming for the business of slavery what if i kill a slave in islam يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم القصاص في القتل الحر بالحر والعبد بالعبد والأنثى بالأنثى فمن أفعل etc. Okay, let's read. What does that mean? I mean, what is that? This is Arabic. Okay, you speak Arabic. We don't speak Arabic. So what you will do now? Let's read translation. Chapter two, one seventy-eight. All who you believe in the law of equality is prescribed to you in the case of murder. Free for the free, slave for the slave, women for the women. Have you ever heard of a stupid law like this before? Read carefully. That is the most stupid, disgusting, racist, hateful law. In the case of murder, Allah now making justice. Hmm. What we do? Free for a free. What does that mean? If a free man killed a free man, a free man will be killed. Okay. If a slave was killed, a slave will be killed. <laughs> to make it simple for you, if you kill my slave, I kill your slave. And in the article they are saying to us, if you follow Islam, you free yourself from a slavery. This is God. The one supposed to talking here is God. This is not even Muhammad. Muhammad is a prophet of God who Allah told him to say this. I mean, Muhammad, it's not his fault. It's Allah. This is Allah, Mr. Allah. How are you doing, Mr. Allah? I mean, your, your law is amazing. Imagine we make a law. It says, uh, uh, you see Muhammad here the, the foolish Muhammad is trying to copy from the Jewish from the law of Moses where eye for an eye and because Muhammad is a foolish man he understood eye for an eye in such a way you kill my slave I kill your slave but this is not the law this is not an eye for an eye eye for an eye that he took my eye I took your eye what what is the what the slave did so now we have two victims i am a white free man and you are a white free man i kill your slave your black slave and now as a penalty for you know for for me what do you do you kill my black slave but none of those slaves did any crime what they are we have now two end victims the real criminal is a free How in the world you can believe in such a stupid garbage religion? And yet they say to us that in the Quran or in Islam you free yourself. And if I go back to the article, because I don't want to miss anything, really, this is an amazing article. Islam converting to Islam liberate a person from slavery. You know, I'm going to stop talking about slavery which is literally slavery you know you know but before I just finish this look how Islam free you from slavery my friend all of you remember the hadith where it says that Muslims are the best of mankind because they think they are the best race and Islam consider Muslims as a race and Muhammad he said my people will be 73 73 uh, sect my people my nation my ummah ummah in Islam is a nation uh, if you read this hadith with me Look how Islam free you from slavery, my friend. I mean, Islam is the most beautiful religion. Unbelievable. It's the religion will free you from slavery. Muslims are the best for mankind. Okay, why they are the best of mankind? You are the best of people ever raised for the benefit of mankind. Chapter 3, verse 110. Okay, Abdul, why we are, if, I, if I'm a Muslim, why we are the best of mankind? Okay, because, read carefully. Uh, the best of for mankind are those 
who bring them with the chains around their necks so if the Muslims today they have the power over you their duty to be the best of mankind and how they can be the best of mankind they will bring you all Chinese Indonesian Malaysian uh, Thailand uh, American German uh, Dutch whatever all of you the chains around your neck and the purpose they want to save you brother they want to save you from hellfire have you ever heard of filthy cult more dangerous than this and yet in the article you are saying to us Islam free you from slavery you your God could not find a better way to make people accept him except making Muslims go in on war and capture the Yazidi girls and the Christian girls and rape them even in the road and in the street yesterday uh, I was uh, waiting for the bus uh, here in, in Germany and uh, uh, I saw in the news uh, in, uh, in, the, in the phone uh, about a woman a Yazidi woman she came as a refugee to Germany and when she was walking in the street she met a member of Isis who before many years ago maybe four years ago he was the one who uh, he you know he bought her in the city of Al Musul he bought her for one hundred dollar and he raped her thousands of time imagine he's from Isis and he is a free in the street in Germany and not only that the story continue saying this man he started harassing her chasing her following her wherever she go she called the police she told them this guy is from Isis he is chasing me he's harassing me he's threatening he want to rape me again he want to kidnap me again the police did nothing to this guy and then the girl she decided to leave back to Iraq this Yazidi poor girl this is how stupid governments in Europe are he is from Isis he was with them fighting with them killing many people and now he is a free in Germany in the top of that they found a real witness for his crimes uh, one of his victims she, she said this is the guy who bought me he is one of Isis and now he is chasing me and they knew about him and they don't do anything welcome to Germany the best for mankind are those who they bring them with the chains around their necks are you going to allow anyone to bring you and the chain around your neck over my dead body I die free and or I live free there's no third option there's no second option anyone want to force me you see because when somebody force you to eat food you don't want it's a slavery when somebody wear force you to wear clothes you don't want it's a slavery when somebody force you what to eat what to drink what to what to say what not to say it's a slavery slavery is not necessarily just putting a chin around the neck of somebody even though Islam literally practice and teach that as you see in the front of us so how you lie to us and you say that Islam free you from slavery when all of Islam is about slavery a woman she is married in Islam to a man the man he have a right to beat her I mean how you see how free you are you are free to the point you get a free beating all of us we knew That Muslims they made tons of article about beating women Islam and they say to you ah this is about light beating my friend what's wrong with you you see first of all this is a big fat lie and we can prove it easy what does that mean disgusting stupid let me show you the slavery. You see here in the article, they posted for us a picture of a blonde European woman. Obviously, she is crazy, stupid. 
to convert to Islam she have no idea what she is converting to as the rest of them and Islam supposedly it's not European uh, like a secular government will free you no 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 you will be free in Islam to the point the second you convert to Islam you wear hijab you see how free you are now is a hijab is a choice maybe in Europe yes but Islam is not a choice and hijab is not a choice in Islam so where is the freedom can a Muslim woman in Saudi Arabia take off her hijab if you want to say to me this is the regime that's a big fat lie that is a big fat lie every Muslim you will see children they are being forced to to uh, you know and most of those women by the way who convert to Islam they are just seeking a man in the bed not really seeking religion or God she date a Hindu she became a Hindu second day she date a, a Buddha he she's a Buddha the day after she is an atheist she smokes cigarette and she take drugs I'm not saying all atheists do that I'm just you know uh, they don't care really what is your religion or what they care how to have a man in the bed whoever he is if he is an Egyptian suddenly she speak Egyptian if he is Iraqi she is Iraqi if he is Indian she is Indian if he is they don't care they don't have those people they don't really care for anything they care only for having what they want and they change their religion the same they change their men Today my husband is a Muslim, tomorrow he's a Christian. Okay, today I am a Muslim, tomorrow I'm a Christian. I remember, and I don't know if she's going to listen and hear me, there was a lady from uh, the UK. She married a Muslim Abdul for four or five years. I forgot really how many, I think more, uh, maybe seven years, uh, because she had more than four kids from him. Um, they made her work in a radio station in order to convert British people into Islam and they use them always in the propaganda to convert you you see they bring you a blonde guy and they give him a salary to do dawah like a Yusuf state big salary give him free housing big salary free airline ticket a free hotel five stars good life and the purpose is to make you believe look even American convert to Islam even a British convert to Islam even you know uh, they use them as a bait for the foolish fish but none of those people knows what Islam is about everybody is converting for his own reason and then when this reason disappear the conversion disappear this is why there wasn't there was a conference if somebody have the video please send it to me so we can share it in the link in the info there was a conference I forgot I think it was in Chicago uh, they were the, the, the title of the conference why uh, most of the convert leave in maximum of three years out of Islam because they discover that Islam is a scam as simple as that some they convert in, in jail seeking protection like you, you go in jail you have to join a group you know like in America there's Latino protecting Latino a black protecting black, white protecting white, uh, Nazis protecting Nazis, uh, KKK protecting KKK. So you have to join a group. You have to convert to one of them, as simple as that. If you don't belong to any group, okay, you, you know, you join Muslim, say Shahada, they will provide you protection inside jail. They gang together. They leave jail, they leave Islam. Uh, Islam liberate a person from slavery you see I want to go more deep in this uh, title you know when I pray to God and I have to pray to him in a certain way certain move certain standing certain time is that liberation or this is slavery you became the second you became a Muslim you became like a toy programmed by a stupid software so you wake up in a certain time because if you are late Allah will not accept and you have to do certain moves 
and you have to repeat a prayer is not even yours imagine when a Muslim he pray he's not a praying he is just repeating what he heard what is written in the Quran that's it none of those your words are your words where's your prayer where's your Islam is not a religion of spirit or spiritual religion Islam is a religion of ritual you practice ritual praying is a ritual it is something you have to do as a duty it's a must it's a it's not a choice really prayer is something come from the heart not something come because I have to and I have to do it in a certain time and I have to stand in certain way and I have to say certain things and women when they pray they have to do it different from the Muslim men because they are women they have to wear certain clothes blah 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 so where is the prayer where is the where is the contact between you and God it's not exist so the first thing will happen to you when you are a Muslim you became a slave of customs custom uniform custom hand moving custom word saying custom feet uh, uh, together custom uh, even your ears even your uh, it's a custom you are a slave you have to do it exactly as somebody else exists 1400 years ago and no one knows where he got those movements. Any Muslim can tell me how Muhammad learned how to pray like this. Uh, is that in the Quran? Uh, did Jibreel stand in front of him and he taught him how to do this movement? What is that? Or Muhammad was merging some from the Sabian and some from here and some from there, some from the Jews. Why I need to pray to God? You know, when Jesus said, when you pray, go to your closet, which means to your private room, and pray. Don't be the same as the hypocrite who pray in the corners. Islam is a religion who pray in the corner. For all the point is to be hypocrite. <coughs> and as long as we are talking about being hypocrite, you know, Muhammad himself, he considered the Muslims hypocrites. Look what he said. Uh, Muhammad, as we know, he threatened all the Arab around him either to be killed or they convert. And then the Arab, when they notice that Muhammad is winning the fight, in order to protect them themselves from you know from from being killed. And or being enslaved and their women taken as a sex slave they decide uh, you know uh, you know to uh, to convert to Islam so look what happened in chapter 48 verse number 16 Muhammad he sent his message to the Arab and he claimed that Allah is the one who said that to him to tell them say Say to the desert Arab who lagged behind, lagged behind in what? They did not join Islam. Ye shall be summoned to fight against people given uh, 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 like mighty power. Then shall ye fight or they shall submit. But the fact doesn't say submit, by the way, surrender. Okay. What this verse saying? The, the Muslim, they say to you, Islam, where, where, can you show me one verse in the Quran saying Islam is split by sword? It's in the front of you. It's a threat from Muhammad speaking as if it is Allah speaking, fabricating a verse saying, This is God told me. Either you convert or you die. As simple as that. Let's change the translation. You know, maybe the Muslim don't like this translation. Shakir. Shakir is a better scammer. Hmm? What Shakir he will say? Say to those who deliverers of the de desert uh, who we are left behind, you shall soon be invited to fight against the people. Okay, you will fight against them until they submit. Okay, then if you obey, Allah will grant you a good reward. And if you turn your back, uh, we will punish you, we will kill you. Here in the translation. 
it says the word submit. Is it really submit? Let us change the translator. Eh, we try them one by one. So we, we try Ali, so Yosef Ali Shakir, and now Bigdal. I'm just trying my best, you know, to show you how the Muslim lie when they translate. Say unto the people uh, of the wandering Arabs who were left behind, you will be called against the folk of my etc., to fight them until they surrender. Do you see it? This is the truth. I told you that Muhammad sent the three letters, and the letter says, Aslam Taslam. Aslam Taslam. You know, you don't believe me? I can show you the hadith right now. Aslam Taslam means convert, surrender, or you will be killed. To surrender, you will be safe. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, we have tons of hadith here, you know. But I want to show you the one where he sent the letter to Hercules inviting him to Islam or die. Read with me carefully. I call you to Islam. If you become a Muslim, you will be safe. Do you see it? <laughs> have you ever heard? Have you ever heard of a peaceful religion like this? Convert to Islam and you will be safe. And what Muhammad he did after that? He launched an attack on the Roman. You see, when we mention, <clears throat> uh, let me, uh, uh, the Byzantine emperor, and he called the letter of the messenger, etc. Blah 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 blah. Okay, he said, hurry it out, saying, in the name of Allah, the merciful, etc. Okay, from Muhammad, the slave of Allah, and his messenger to the ruler of Byzantium. Okay, and then he says, I call you to Islam. If you become a Muslim, you will be safe, and Allah will double your reward. If you turn away. And, you, and then you incur the wrong actions of your subject. And what happened? Muhammad, he made a chapter. It's called uh, uh, chapter of at But chapter 9, verse number 29 says, Go and kill the Christians and the Jews until they convert to Islam or they pay the jizya. And this is exactly what this letter is about. That's exactly what this letter is about. Aslam to Islam. Convert to Islam, you we will not kill you. And here in the Quran is no different. Say to the Arab, surrender or you will fight. And the funny they say to you is Muhammad never attack anyone. Oh, those people they are not fighting him. He is saying to them, surrender or you will either you surrender to Muhammad. It's not submit. Islam does not mean submit, as many fools keep repeating. Islam means surrender. So until they surrender. So what is the required here from those Arabs? To surrender to Muhammad. He is God and Allah is his messenger. You see the Muslim, they say to us, Muhammad is the prophet and Allah the, is the messenger. The fact is the opposite. Muhammad, each time he wanna say something, he claims something, he claimed that Allah told him, but the fact Allah is the messenger because Muhammad is using Allah. And the true God who is making the Quran is Muhammad. But look what happened here. Muhammad, he threatened them if they don't surrender, and if they obey, I will reward you, which means we will give you female slaves when we attack the neighbors, the Christians, the Jews, the Roman, etc. But if you don't, eh, we will punish you. Then those Arab, to save themselves from being killed and slaughtered and being slaved, their women raped, they converted to Islam. But look what happened. In the chapter after that, we are reading from chapter 48, verse number 16. If we go just one chapter, this is the same Arab after they converted to Islam. Chapter 49, verse number 14. 49, remember, 49, 14, and 48, 16. So 48, 16, we read about it. Muhammad threatened, making a threat to the Arab. And 49, 14, Muhammad speaking to the Arab who he forced them to convert to Islam. And look what happened. And remember, this is Muslim translation, so Muslim don't tell me oh, he's lying, and Christian prince is a liar. The Arab desert, oh, okay, now the Arab desert is the same Arab desert we were speaking about them a minute ago. 
or Muhammad said to them surrender or you die surrender and obey or we will punish you by death they say we believe hold on what the Arab now they say they we believe so what happened now they became Muslims they become Muslims you become a Muslim you are not done yet Muhammad is after you say Allah saying to Muhammad say ye have no faith but ye only say we have surrendered to the will of Allah remember this is not this is the word here it's translated as submitted it's Islam we became Muslims our wills to Allah okay hold on hold on hold on how Muslim he lied to us saying that you submit to Allah and you use the word translation here submitted as submitted in the same time you are saying to me you have no faith you only submitted what does that mean it means the surrender because if you submit yourself is something you do willingly this is what the word submit mean but obviously those people they are not doing it morally because they have no faith so how they have no faith but yet they are Muslims if we go in the Arabic text here you will see the word translated as submitted is the word we become Muslims and this is where the Muslims translation try to fool you Qulu aslamna. you see the word aslama aslamna the letter na at the end is a letter you add to make it for a group about ourselves like us so aslama is coming from the word Muslim who became a Muslim it's in the past tense aslamna so we became a Muslim they say we became a Muslim they say we surrender but say to them you did not believe faith did not even enter your heart say Allah saying to them supposedly say we are Muslims because your faith did not enter your heart so how you become a Muslim in Islam it's just by saying Shahada you see the verse in front of us saying clearly that those people faith did not enter their heart and Allah is correcting them don't say that we believe let me go to different translation just to show you and we are not picking up a translation you can tell me if there's any Muslim in the text please tell me which translation you like which is your favorite one we have all kind of hummus we have hummus we have shish kebab because if you don't like Yusuf Ali we can give you shakir let us see shakir what shakir want to say to us let us see shakir is very cute the dwellers of the desert say we believe so what they what the Arab they say huh the Arab they say we believe okay Allah say to them as a response supposedly say you do not believe okay so now it's confirmed by Allah that those Arab don't believe okay how in the world people don't believe became Muslims anyone can explain to me the explanation is very easy it is in the in the chapter we just showed you before at chapter 49 where Muhammad he said to them convert or I, I will kill you convert or die so the Arab they protect themselves they decided okay we'll protect our family from being killed slaughtered taken as a slave burning our houses our tents etc when we say you are a prophet and we pay him the zakat give him some money leave her alone see you do not believe but say we submitted here again submitted but the fact is surrender we submitted and faith has not yet entered into your heart how in the world those people became Muslims and faith never entered their heart any Abdul can explain to us so everything they say to us about you know you convert to Islam you became a free liberated what liberated those people they are forced into Islam how I am liberated and your prophet says the one who leave the religion kill him I'm liberated from what exactly hmm? I am liberated from what I'm liberated to the point if I change my religion you will kill me is that the liberation you have for me so now I am a slave for Islam forever
you are liberated my friend let us see let's show you some more stuff I mean, the ambulance here never stop. <clears throat> you know, I'm just trying to show you some verses. Oh. Actually, if I want to talk about this topic, it's going to take me maybe a, a year because all those verses, it can be used to show you how stupid this cult is. But you are liberated to the point, if you go to chapter 9, verse number 29, you cannot even take your father and your brother as a friend. I mean, do you see how much liberation you have? The point Islam involved about who can be a relative to you. Your father... And your brother, you see that in the Muslim, they say to you, the Bible says, Jesus said, the one who don't hate his uh, parents uh, and love me, he don't belong to me, etc. But this is not about hating your parents. It's about if they choose their belief over me. Otherwise, no Christian hate his parents. The Bible says it clearly that the one who disrespect his parents should be put to death. This is how much horrible is to be disrespectful for your parents but if we go in the Quran and we see how 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 the Quran you know uh, uh, speak about revelation as an example the first rule of the Quran you cannot take anyone as a friend and not only that those who want to take you as a friend your duty is to kill them all but like, hold on they want to take me as a friend why I want to kill them oh no Abdul brother Allahu Akbar. Those are the infidels they want to kill us. And we are defending ourselves. It's a big fat lie. Read with me carefully. Chapter 4, verse number 40, uh, 89. Uh, and again, I'm using the Muslim translation, so Muslim will not say I'm making things up. In this chapter, you will see here with me the following. Uh, they but wish that you should reject the faith as they do and thus be some footing as they but take not threads from their ranks until they flee in the way of Allah so now Muhammad is saying don't take them as a friend until they became Muslims okay you see what is the problem if I am a Christian and I became a friend to a Muslim I mean does it hurt Christianity isn't it me as a Christian? I should be a messenger for everybody, good to everybody. Why we cannot be friends? If I cannot take you as a friend, it's me we have to be enemies. Why you forbid me from being a friend to them? Somebody, obviously, those people, he's not a bad person. He want to be a friend. You see here, they lie to us. They say, oh, we are, uh, you know, we cannot take you as a friend because you are fighting us. Who's fighting you? They are, they want to, how somebody want to take you as a friend, he want to fight you? Is there? It's there saying in your book, don't take them as a friend. And there is no way this is speaking about someone who is an enemy or he's in a war with you because it, it's not even logical to think about taking someone as a friend who's in a war with you. But the logic of Islam is the following. Anyone who don't believe in the filthy cult of Islam is an enemy to Allah and therefore have to be killed. This is why if we go to chapter 9, verse number 29, it says it clearly, that you have a duty as a Muslim to kill everybody and this is why he forced those Arab to convert to Islam and now they they say okay we surrender okay we surrender to Islam but yet they are not Muslims and how they surrender to Islam because he forced them have you ever heard of somebody uh, join religion but he don't believe in it you know he is not born in it you see, there's many Christians that are Christians by name. They don't you know, really believe in Christianity. They are born of a Christian family. But for me, they aren't Christian. For me, if you are born from a Christian family, it doesn't make you Christian. That's that's garbage. We don't believe in that. A Christian person is a person who believes in Jesus, regardless who is his parents. 
his parents are Muslims, Hindu, Buddhas, etc. Doesn't matter. You have to be reborn again with the Messiah, which means you accept the Messiah willingly and by choice, and nobody with a sword in your neck, and nobody force you, and not by birth you inherit religion. That is stupid, and this is not right. Here we find that those Arab, they've been forced into slavery of Islam. It is not a choice. Faith never entered their heart. But yet they say we believe. We are, you know, we believe. Okay. How you believe? How in the world you believe? How you enter that belief? If you don't have belief in your heart, if be, if faith never enter your heart, that's mean they are being hypocrites. What what forced them to be hypocrites? They want to stay alive. They have a criminal come in with his gangs. They slaughter everybody who don't agree with Muhammad. Believe or die. So we say we believe. So this what they say. Okay, we believe. We say shahada. Bismillah, Allahumma alaihim. I, I, I. Their witness that there is no frog but Allah, and there is no prophet but uh, uh, the, the potato. And now you said shahada, you become a Muslim, but yet you are not a believer. That's weird. Yeah, because they've been forced to. So they try to fool you. And make an article that Islam free you from slavery. Okay, hold on. Islam liberate a person from slavery to man made system and lifestyle. All of Islam is a man made system, and we can prove it very easy. When the God of Islam pro, you know, uh, promote uh, heaven or promote his religion by promising a man endless penis, isn't it? Isn't it obviously this is made by a man who is crazy about sex? When a man claimed that God told him, if you believe in me, I'm going to give you a bracelet in your hand. Bracelet? I mean, are you serious? God want to give me a bracelet? All my life, guys. All my life, I wanted to wear a bracelet. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get a bracelet in my hand. Yeah, my friend, I don't even wear a watch in my hand. Why, why in the world a man want to have a bracelet? A man and he is wearing a bracelet why and what the point and what will happen and what is the extra what is the change in my life will happen when I wear a bracelet I mean what is this bracelet is about is that Apple watch hmm no it's a bracelet made from gold gold what is the value of gold in heaven how stupid this promise is Bracelet made from gold? But who care for gold? I don't even care for gold here. Why I want to call care for gold in heaven? Read carefully with me. Chapter 18, verse number 31. It's so beautiful. Sometimes when I read those verses, I feel I want to cry. I, by the way, I cry for two reasons always. When I cut onion and when I read the Quran. Yeah. Brother, this verse will touch your heart. And many of you will convert to Islam immediately. If we are Zach and Naik, guys, sorry, I'm not reading the text. Uh, the the chat, um, um, the chat is in my phone, and it's really uh, my phone is uh, uh, so small. I don't know what happened to it. It used to be bigger. I don't know. I think this is technology. So look, uh, for them, will be gardens. Okay, the first town, the first thing, okay, we will give you a garden hmm. of eternity. Beneath them rivers will flow. Okay. They will be adorned therein with the bracelet of gold. Wow. God Almighty, even him, he understands the value of gold. I'm, I'm I'm wondering how much gold Allah he bought, you know, as investment. I mean, do you, every Abdul want to give him a bracelet of gold. And how many of you, be honest, how many of you Abdul are so excited to get the the bracelet of Allah? Hmm? God. 
You can get a brace of gold for fifty dollars. I mean, what a big deal! What gold? What? 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 Is, what? This is this is God promising me. And look, Allah, He go in details, man. He go in details. He now describe for you where you will sit, where you will live, what the bracelet you will wear. It's made from what? And then He continues says, and they will wear garment, green garment made of stabrak. Stabrak. You see how they translate for you fine silk that in fact it doesn't say that uh, in the Arabic it says istabraqa istabraqa is the same as Gucci in our time equal to Gucci in the time of Muhammad istabraq is an Iranian fabric Persian fabric you know uh, only very rich people they can afford it and that is made from silk now silk these days is very cheap I mean, it's not really expensive. You can get silk, especially if you go to Iran. It's really, it's not really expensive. Uh, if you want to buy it from a Gucci store, it's going to be very expensive for sure because you are buying for the brand. But God, He is going to buy from Iran a brand. It's called Istabrak. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to you. Who can make Quran like Allah? I want to ask Allah. He could not make silk better than the Iranian. <laughs> yes, do you know what I'm saying? Why? Why in the world? And at that time, the Iranian they wear they wear uh, kuffar. Okay, why you want to buy istabrak from them? But Muhammad, he is fabricating Quran, and he knew that this name is very famous to be the most fine, beautiful silk. So he, Allah Himself is using the brand. It's called Istabraq in the Quran, using a Persian word, a Persian fabric, a Persian made, a, per, a Persian kuffar, putting it in the Quran. How that can happen? But the devil always try to seduce you with all kind of temptation. Those are poor Arab who never had bracelet in their hands. The hadith speak about Muhammad once. He got a golden ring. He spent the whole day looking at it, and people start making fun of him. So he forbid Muslims from wearing golden rings. This is why you see Muslims who believe in Islam truly, they wear silver rings. Muhammad, he went crazy when he got the golden ring. So he knew those Arab, they are poor. They never wear silk. They never have couch. Imagine God promised me to have a couch. I mean, what kind of God this God is? What couch? Brother, if you convert to my religion, I will give you green garment. Imagine all of us in the heaven of Allah, we are wearing green. I mean, this is the most boring color. I, I have nothing against the green, but not to wear it. Honest to God, I don't like to wear a green. I never wear a green clothes in my life. I don't want to wear one too. I might look like a frog. I like to see green grass. I see. I like to see green trees, but green as a clothes is not my favorite. We will be wearing for eternity green. Why are we in the surgery room? And why it have to be green? The answer is very simple. Let us see in the chat who is going to give us the answer. Why Allah guys promising the the Abdul to have a green clothes? Let us see who is of you is going to give me the correct answer. Anyone knows? Anyone knows what the behind of the word the green? Why it's a green? Nobody knows? What happened to the chat? Okay, hold on, guys. I think my chat frozen somehow. Let me do this. Okay. All right. And now it's working. Okay. Why? A green. Why green? Green. Yeah, in the desert. Thank you very much. Here we go. Somebody got it. Those are people of the desert. Green is the most beautiful color for them. Green mean life. Green mean food. Green mean milk. Green mean yogurt. Green mean better. Green mean meat. Because their animals live by the green. If there is no green, they are dead. They are Bedouin, they travel from place to place, far distance, seeking green grass. 
So Muhammad, he knew how much those people, they are attached with the, the green for them is really heaven. And for sure, you know, all of us, we agree that green is a beautiful color uh, for nature. But you will notice that if somebody, he live in, in the Netherlands, he see that the desert is amusing because he have too much green. He's sick of it. But an Arab person who is coming from the desert, he see the green like, wow, look how beautiful it is green. So everybody, he miss something. He think he, like he want to have it. The one who don't live in the beach, he want to go and take a vacation in the beach. But the one who live in the, in, in the beach, his dream is to go to the mountain. And the one who live in the mountain, he want to go to the valley and etc. Human being, he always seek what he don't have. So Muhammad, he knew that those are desert people. They have a great desire for the green color. So here we go. You are where you are going to wear silk. You believe it's silk made in Iran. It's called Istabraqa. And that silk is very fine, very nice. And it's going to be green. So here we go. You get two things at the same time. It's silk and it's green. What do you want more? And then Muhammad, he continue. He says, they will recline on their couches. Well, the couches. God, he is promising me I will be laying down in my couch. What does that mean? And this is the most silly. Why God is speaking about that? Because Muhammad, he knew that those poor Arab, they never have couches. So we should use them. It's like, you know, just to make it simple. If I try to transform the furniture, because all of this is furniture. It's accessories and furniture for a human being. If I try to transform those furniture today, update, Muhammad, if he's existing in the world today, he will say, I will give you iPhone X and uh, 75 screen TV. And I will give you, uh, you know, a big refrigerator. I mean, this is this is how it is. This is how silly it is. What Muhammad is describing in front of us is accessories of housing, clothing. It is very obvious. He is trying to tempt us by his reward, and his reward is very silly. What kind of God here will reward me with such a reward? I cannot find any reason. I cannot find any explanation except that this is made by a man trying to seduce the man. And because the man trying to seduce the man, then he promised him a lot of sexual promises. You know, when you say to me, Islam will free you from slavery, isn't it, isn't it to be a, a sex slave for eternity, a slavery? You see, there is two kinds of sex slaves. There is the one you rape, and there is the one who rape. Both of them are sex slaves. Why? Because in Islam, when you are a Muslim, you are promised supposedly by Allah to have they bend in your ranks in Islam because the heaven of Islam have 100 floor. 100 floor. Every floor have different ranks and different reward. Every floor have a reward. So, like if you go in the hadith. Let's see the hadith. Hold on. Let's see what is the lowest reward for people in heaven in Islam. The lowest, not the highest. Okay, let's see. All right. I'm trying to find you some hadith. Okay. Let me show you this one first. Look how Muhammad is trying to tempt people to join his religion. Listen to this conversation and see how stupid it is. The Messenger of Allah said, Musa asked his uh, Arab. Muhammad here he is using Musa to tell you, I'm not the one is saying that, it's Musa. Who amongst the inhabitants of Jannah will be the lowest in rank? And here we need to ask ourselves why there is ranks in heaven. I mean, what ranks? I thought you are telling me that we will be free from free slavery, but yet in heaven we have ranks. 
So we have a drill sergeant, we have a sergeant, we have a major, we have a colonel, and we have a soldier. So this is slavery again. He said, it will be a person who will be admitted to Jannah last of all. The last one will enter Jannah. When all the Delawares of the Jannah have entered Jannah, Okay, so the one who is the lowest in rank is the last one before almost closing the door he enter. It will be said to him, this is the lowest, read, read carefully. Enter Jannah. But he will say, oh my Rabb, I mean the Muslim translation is very funny. Rabb, Rabb here is mean, uh, it, this is uh, by the way, uh, this is coming from the Aramaic word and it's used in the Hebrew. This is why you say Rabbi. Rabbi is, uh, can be used as a master or lord or even God, Lord as God. Oh my Rob, how I should enter while the people have settled in their apartments and taken their shares. Ah, imagine how nice this is a story. The gate of the heaven almost closed and there's a guy standing at the end and he is like, should I enter not to enter? <laughs> And they said to him, enter man, enter heaven. And then he's saying, how am I going to enter if you give, everybody took his apartments, where are I going to stay? Huh? Everybody took his shares, his apartment, his places, his houses, his uh, grocery, where I'm going to go? So they will say to him, it will be said to him, which means Allah will say to him, you will be satisfied and pleased if you have a kingdom like that, of the, uh, the the march of the world he will say uh, I will be happy uh, my Rabb Allah will say even imagine Allah himself is talking here for you that so here the first promise he will give you richness of a king and the earth Allah said to him are you satisfied now it's like a bazaar he will say yeah okay I think I will be satisfied then he says to him and like that, and like that, and like that, which means like four times, and like that, okay? He will say, he will say that fifth time, so you will you will be more rich than any king in the earth, five times. And here I need to ask a question. I mean, what rich mean? I mean, this is so a stupid, disgusting religion ever. What, I would be rich more than five kings? And what I would do with the money there? I mean, who is the stupid here? I will be rich more than five. What I will do? I will buy a Ferrari there. Hmm? Are we going into heaven or we are going to Las Vegas? What I will do with richness of five kings? That's stupid. That's madness but he knew that human they love money and all everything in this cult is about tempting you with sex and money so what do you want money okay we will give you the money how much money you want do you like to be a rich like a king sure sure like a king are you kidding yeah sure Okay, I will make you church like a king and another king, another king, another five kings. I will make you rich. Why five? What about making 40? Do you Muslims use your brain? And then he continued. And here it looked like a bazaar, and Allah became like a Abdul. He is asking you, please just get in heaven. And you saying, No, unless you make it make me happy. I mean, I want to get be sure that heaven is my place. What you offer. And Allah says to you, okay, hold on. Let me so show you how I can convince you to enter heaven. I mean, the guy do have a choice. Either you go to hell or you go to heaven. Which one? A little house of a dog in heaven is better than a palace in hell. I mean, what is this discussion is about? This is stupid. And then Allah, he continues saying to him, <clears throat> you will have whatever your soul desire oh boy oh boy what does that mean anything whatever your soul desire you see it in front of your eyes what if this guy is again you have it 
What if a guy he want to sleep with Muhammad? You will have it. What if this guy he want to sleep with Allah? You will have it. Whatever your soul desire. You see, when you say whatever, it's whatever. It's me. There's no limitation. And actually, the Muslim believe that in the heaven of Allah, there is no limitation of reward. And they believe. And I challenge the Muslim to say it's a lie. Don't force me to show you the reference. Don't force me to show you. In the heaven of Allah, you can have sex with every single member of your family. Some scholars, they say, except your mother. Some scholars, they say, except your mother and daughter. And the rest is free, which means you can have sex with your sister, with your grandma, your auntie, all, all the family members, because they say the reason for... Uh, Forbidden having sex with a family member in earth because uh, uh, you know uh, Allah he made it as a way for lineage to get married from someone is lawful for you but in heaven there is no children's and there is nobody will get children's however don't forget if you have my book uh, six and Allah uh, uh, very number one and very number two you will see where the hadith says Muhammad he said if a Muslim he wished to have a child he will be breathing it and deliver it in less than uh, a few which means in 15 minutes uh, so a Muslim man if you wish anything he will have it and now what if a Muslim man he wished to have a child that would be a contradiction for the Quran because you know you will not have a children's you there is no children's but here it says if you wish whatever you wish and the second God he promised that whatever you wish you have to grant me my wish it doesn't matter what it is and whatever your eyes could delight whatever my eyes could delight he will say I am well pleased Oh Allah Musa said who will be the highest rank in Jannah so now Musa's he knew now what is the lowest rank the lowest rank he will be rich as five kings you grant you whatever you wish and then we have a higher rank okay what is the higher rank look at this Allah said they are those whom I choose and I establish their honor with my own hand I attest uh, uh, with my seal that they would be pleased with such a bounty as no eye has seen and no ear has heard and no human minds has received I mean, look how stupid this is promise. You just said here, I will grant the lowest one whatever he wish. What if he wished to have the reward of the highest rank? I don't know what you know. I mean, I wish I am stupid. Uh, literally, I wish I am stupid because sometimes stupid it, it's fun. I mean, you see things, it's you know, it didn't make me upset, and you are happy all the time. I mean, what if those guys you just say to them, I grant you whatever you wish, and now you are saying there is a higher reward. If this guy he wish to have this reward, are you going to grant him or not? You just say to him whatever soul, whatever your soul wish. I mean, it's good to be a donkey. It's good to be a donkey, and it's better if you are a mule. In the best scenario, be Abdul. I don't know. I mean, this is so beautiful. And me myself, I feel like I want to convert. I mean, I don't know how I can resist the temptation to convert to Islam right now. So, you know, reading this article really make you feel like this article is made up for a bunch of idiots who have no brain literally converting to Islam allow a person truly to experience God love yeah let us experience God love let us experience God love. I want to experience God love I cannot really resist the love of Allah look here look here All the verses in front of us is speaking about not to take a friend's people and not to love them. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, la tattakhidu al-kafirina awliya min duni al-mu'mineen. You know, you can go uh, and read those verses. I don't want to read them one by one. Chapter 4, verse 144, etc. 
all those verses is about love ya ayyuha alladhina amanu la tattakhidu al-yahuda wan-nasara awliya'a ba'dahum awliya'a ba'd okay this book how much love this is a religion of love man allah is forbidding the muslims from taking christians as friends as protectors so where is the love why jesus says love your enemy and allah saying you cannot love the jews and the christians and you cannot even take them as a friends why how you muslims say that isa oh, sorry jesus is a muslim and muhammad is a muslim but their message is the opposite one saying to us not only you love your friends and your family you love even your enemies you pray for them you pray for those who curse you for those who hurt you here you can't even take friends from those who want to take you as a friend just because they are a christian this is a message of hate and not only that allah saying clearly which is muhammad allah Akka muhammad and any one of you take them as a friend he is one of them which means he is an apostate and you know the apostate punishment is death that's crazy ah i forgot i forgot sorry here when we were trying to read about the reward of uh, of the heaven we did not go to the uh, to other hadith i didn't know I, I think i'm getting old i'm already 17 all right uh, um let us see this one there's many 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 hadith here uh, All those hadith about the lowest reward. <clears throat> and where you okay? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this hadith as an example. The message of Allah said, "Indeed, the least of the people in paradise in rank is the one who shall look uh, uh, at his garden." His wives, his bounties, his servants, and his beds, and in the distance of a thousand years. <laughs> Man, how sharp my eyes are. And how big my bedroom. My bedroom will be filled with beds and women in a distance of a thousand year so a question prophet of allah how long is going to take me to walk in my room if my eyes can go to the distance of a thousand year how far it going to take me how long is going to take me to cross my room to go from the first bed to the last bed unbelievable i'm i am i love it I, you know, I have to, I have to admit that we Christians, we need this heaven. I mean, look at this man. Look, don't you like to have a big apartment, a huge house, your bedroom, my bedroom, the bounty, what bounties? I had those women we capture, yeah, and the slaves, servants. You see here, they are saying slaves, or serv or servants. Those, those are sex slaves. Those are, you know, and they, the funny they say to us, Islam will free you from slavery. Even in heaven, there are servants. What those servants do? I mean, okay, I pray to Allah, I convert to Islam. Why I'm going to have servants? What is justice? So those are going to be my slaves for eternity, just because I prayed to God five times. Don't you think this is too much, Abdul? Too much, too much lies. Then Muhammad he continued. And the, the noblest of them, Allah will look at their faces morning and night. <laughs> and not only that, if you are from the highest believer, Allah will make your face so white, so shiny. You know, it's very, very beautiful, brother. Let us continue. Hmm. Uh, 
this one is funny uh, but I'm, tr I'm trying to find different hadith <coughs> Mm. And this is a funny hadith too. I don't know, like there's a hadith about the 80,000, I uh, for some reason is not showing. Uh, the hadith says that in the heaven of Allah, you will have uh, uh, 80,000 uh, uh, female, you know? Let me see. Maybe this one. Oh, here we go. Look at this amazing hadith. <clears throat> the least of the people of paradise in possession is the one with 80,000 servants. I mean, do you see how much Islam provided freedom? They are allowed to own, they've been forced actually or, uh, to wage war, capture women. Muhammad encouraged them to attack the Romans so they can get the blonde girls. And now in heaven, this is heaven now. In heaven, you will have 80,000 slaves. That's amazing. So beautiful. This is the this is the truly heaven. In your house, brother, you will have 80,000 slaves. And who are the slaves? Anyone knows? They are boys. Young boys, imagine boys. We will slave boys. How in the world you can do that? If you will read with me the verse here, let's see uh, where it says. By the way, guys, I have a, here a dog, his name is Teddy. He wanna say hi. All right, in case you wanna say hi to him, he's the enemy of Allah and he's my helper now. Uh, uh, if you read with me, let us go. Yeah, which verse I want to show you? Yeah. وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ غِلِمَانٌ لَهُمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ لُؤْلُؤُنْ مَكْنُونَ Chapter 52, verse 24. What is this verse saying? And around them, brother, around you in heaven, they will be serving you, devoted boys. They are young male servants. They are very, you see here, they are saying handsome. You know, it says in Arabic, they are, they are white like pearls. They are white like pearls, well guarded. I mean, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to have 80,000 little child serving me as a slave for eternity this is so beautiful my heart is being touched i feel like i'm in heaven already my friend if you have in your house four kids they will drive you crazy imagine in the heaven of this mad man muhammad you will have eighty thousand little boy captured captured and they are naked white boys young boys and they will be serving you for eternity aren't you happy be honest be honest that's so beautiful how in the world you can resist such a heaven and yet in the article you are saying to me in islam you convert to islam you will be free but free right now i'm not free anymore because now you put me in in a house is is not my choice to be there you decide for me what to wear it's already known the fabric the color the bracelet i will wear the the couch i will sit in and the number of the servants and the number of the women i'm going to rape and you are telling me i'm free Where is the freedom? 
Where's the freedom? Even my the fabric I will wear is a green. Can I have a choice? Even the food you will eat in the heaven of Allah is not your choice. If we go in the Quran, just to give you an example, you know. <clears throat> Read carefully with me. What I will eat in the heaven of Allah? What is my menu? Do you know that in the heaven of Allah there is only birds barbecue? Yes. Let us see here. Read carefully with me. Chapter 56, verse number 21. Have you ever heard of a God like this? In this chapter here, actually, it's very funny. I mean, it's really... Here it says, And you will eat from the meat of birds that they may desire. So your menu, only birds. It doesn't say chicken. It doesn't say... Uh, we don't know what birds. Your menu... The meat in the menu is only birds. Where is the freedom? Now, now we are in heaven, yet, but yet I'm going to eat for eternity only birds' meat, chicken. Now I am in heaven, but I'm going to wear a bracelet Allah He chose for me. Now I'm in heaven, I'm going to wear a green silk clothes for eternity as if I'm a prisoner or I am in the madness, uh, uh, mad, mad hospital. Where everybody wear a uniform and you have no choice to take it off especially in the heaven of islam you don't even change the uniform because according to the quran the 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 clothes in the heaven they will never they will never be ruined and they will never get dirty and they will never have no wrinkles so i enter heaven i wear the green silk fabric for eternity and in the heaven i will be addicted to alcohol and i will be serving by youth who they are very young for eternity and remember those youth they will not bleed which means they will have sex with me too and then i am going to be giving cups and there is in my house there will be flowing fountains and anyone remember those fountains what is the fountain in my house who remember let us see uh, how many of you what is the time now Man, the time go fast it's getting again guys uh, I don't want to remind you uh, today tonight uh, uh, we will do a live broadcast me and the brother Amir and some other brothers but we don't know how many of they will be so don't forget to join us uh, I posted the link for the page of uh, brother Amir because I might not be able to broadcast on my channel so you can see it in his channel so in the info you will see a link video link for his page and you can you can view us later in in that page the fountain of life thank you uh, narrow gate yeah you are a german you really are a german nah. you see i wish i can say i went to germany and i found it full of german i cannot say that no more i went to germany and i found it full of non-german <laughs> I I took the bus, you know, I took a bus. I look I look in the bus, there's no German in the bus. I'm I'm serious, there's no German in the bus. I think the only German was in the bus, it was a driver. I know what happened to this country. I have no idea. I thought I'm coming to Germany, I found myself coming to a different country. Uh, this woman in your country, the leader of this country, she screwed everything up. Uh actually i recorded the video yesterday while i was walking in one of the cities here you know around me i will post it later in uh, in youtube uh, now uh, going back to the fountains you remember before we spoke about uh, the fountain of youth you remember that story of the uh, uh, the prophet al-khadr prophet al-khadr al-khadr mean green al-khadr mean green and why he was called Al Khadr, according to Muslims and according to Islam, not to me. 
because he drank from the fountain of youth the fountain of youth and since he drank from the fountain of youth which you can you can see an example of it in the movie it's called the the pirate of the caribbean i don't know which part you know the fountain of youth by the way is is a, is a old in many mythology in many religions in history and today is still exists as a story you know to the point we see it in movies you know all kind of fiction movies you will find always a uh, story of uh, you know fountain of youth actually let me see if i can find the hadith for you Um. <clears throat> Let's see. Maybe we can find it first. Let us see. Let me pray to Allah so maybe I will be lucky. Hmm. And by the way, guys, uh, right now I'm taking some karate uh, uh, classes. Yeah, you see, I have some friends that play kar karate. Uh, Bruce Lee is my friend. And if you ask me why, uh, because right now I see the hadith in front of me where Musa says he did beat the angel uh, of death and he blocked his eye off. This is not out of our topic, but just, you know, we are here. So Allah, he sent the angel of death to Musa Abu Huraira reported, Allah Messenger having said that the angel of death came to Musa and said, Respond to the call of Allah, i.e., prepare for death. Now, Musa is a very stubborn Jew. Musa, peace upon him, gave a blow to the, at the eye of the angel of death and knocked it out. <laughs> Unbelievable. If, if this is a true story guys this is, must be a true story I mean it happened it happened all the time especially if you are a Jew I mean imagine you are a Jew and not only a Jew you are Moses do you know how many how many belt Moses have in the in the in the in the art of fighting he graduated from the Kung Fu uh, school uh, he uh, uh, you know he graduated from Master Ching Chong Chi in China, and he was very well known actually. Even movies they hire Musas because after he did beat the angel who have 600 wings and he blocked his eyes out. I mean, and then the angel he went back to Allah and he said, Look what, uh, <laughs> look what Musas did to me. He don't want to die. So Allah he put his eye back, and I'm so glad that Allah he can fix that. I mean that's amazing and you say to me in Islam there's no miracle the angel went back to Allah the exalted and said you send me to your servant who does not like to die and he knocked out my eye Allah restored his eye in a proper place I'm so glad it is restored in the proper place I was afraid Allah would put it in his ass <laughs> excuse my language I cannot hold myself from being being uh, <clears throat> Unbelievable. Imagine Allah restored the eye in not in a proper place. What do you think is going to be? In his nose? I mean, look, look how Muhammad is so clear in details that he restored the eye in the proper place. You see how he is so too, too much into details. It is in the proper place. Now, let's go back to the story we were trying to show you. I mean, this is very complicated, man. We are going to finish the topic. You keep jumping from topic to topic. All right, all right. Where is Ain al Hayat? I'm trying to find here we go in this uh, here we go in this hadith here and this is a Sahih hadith so don't tell me it's weak and this is Sahih Bukhari 
And this is speaking about Musa trying to find the Prophet Al Khadr and where he will meet him in the junctions of the two seas. And what is the two seas according to the Muslim interpretation? That is what the seas of Persia, the Gulf of Persia, which is called today the Arabian Gulf by the Arab, trying to hijack the name. And the Mediterranean. Have you ever heard the Mediterranean meet with the Persian Gulf? How did that happen? Uh, Islamic science. So here, uh, 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 Musa has asked Allah how I can meet him. Allah told him, take with you a fish. Put it in the basket, which means that it's fish. And when the fish is lost, that means you and you follow the place of the fish. When the fish will leave a mark. Have you ever heard of a fish will leave a mark? How that can happen? It's in Islam, it happened. So to make the story short, and I'm not going to read all of it, you know. Uh, uh, our brother Phil there, he will post the link for you so you can receive the reference. <coughs> uh, when when Musa arrived to a spring, a spring called Ainul Hayat. Ainul Hayat means the spring of life. The, the the one you you call it in the movies uh, the you the youth uh, you stay always alive you stay always youth <clears throat> so the fish touch the water as you see here and none come in it and touch its water but became alive do you see it this is a true story this is not from the Caribbean movie no this is this is the one and who is the one thing the story guys show respect please please show respect the one who is saying this is story and th this is the proof that this story is must be true is a prophet Muhammad peace upon him and this is why and this is the clear evidence that this story is absolutely true okay uh, you see here it says so whoever touch Ainul Hayat the water you know will make will make that thing alive so some of the water of that spring fell over the fish so it moved and it slipped out of the basket and entered the sea when moses woke up he asked his attendant bring our early meal with me the fish but oh, why do you want to eat the fish man allah he told you to save it the narrator said moses did not suffer a fatigue because after he had passed the place that he had ordered to observe his attendant yes yeshua ibn nun said and here even the funnies and the stories are funny because for those who do not know the word noon is a word mean fish fish or a wheel you know so Yeshua Ibn Noon his name Yeshua the son of a fish do you remember what happened when uh, etc uh, anyway so uh, the, the story here the just the, the purpose for me to mention this story that everything we see written by Muslims is nothing but a fiction the same as the religion there's two sides of fiction in Islam fiction written in their articles speaking about things is not even exist in the religion pretending that Islam is bringing salvation Islam giving you freedom what a freedom if the Islam teach the man he can be the wife what a freedom if the man have, can have four wives what a freedom if the man he can divorce his wife by a text message what if a freedom if you are a person who been ordered even what to eat what not to eat somebody might say to me uh, well the Jews they've been ordered not to eat what to eat my friend the Jews you know uh, uh, to make it simple like somebody will say to you isn't it the Old Testament telling you that not to eat pork the pigs that you know the pigs they, they grow in the field and they eat whatever in their way including the people so people they have sword fight uh, people die in the street pigs they eat them and you eat the pig you eat you know you can carry a disease and you can even carry something or someone who did uh, animal who uh, even ate an, uh, a human being so everything have a reason but this is not about I am forcing you I am advising you you see when when uh, when the, the the law of Moses is a practice by the Jews many of the Jews don't even understand what God is trying to say to them to the point when Jesus was helping some uh, some people, they said to him, uh, you know, uh, even like his uh, his disciple, as an example, uh, they were eating or or or, or gathering some uh, uh, food uh, in the Sabbath. The Jews they said to them, "Your men, look at your men. 
they are working in Sabbath they are gathering food in Sabbath what Jesus said Sabbath was made for the man not the man made for the Sabbath so all the teaching of the Old Testament is about for your benefit not to force you it's for your benefit the Jews they love money they like to, like, they like to work Saturday they like to work uh, 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 24 hours seven days a week to make money so the law came for a reason those people they do that and they will never stop working so let us enforce a law on them that in Saturday you and your servant you do nothing but it was not to serve God it was for the benefit of the man so Jesus said Sabbath was made for the man not the man made for Sabbath in Islam all the rituals you see it's about God why you pray because God he order you to pray and if you don't pray he will punish you why you make a donation not because you are a good person but because if you make a donation the, the, the good deeds will delete the bad deeds and you donate to who you donate to Muhammad all the donations spoke of Islam it's about Muhammad making money not about donating to someone today you see Muhammad did not mention donation for others he was alive at that time and he want people to donate to him and by the way we have a donation link if you like to donate and we accept earring and rings as Muhammad used to do to women he scared the hell of them and he scared them to the point he forced them to give their rings and their earring if you remember and we mentioned this hadith not uh, just last week I think you know like we do not need to repeat it again and again so in this cult I never saw people who make false articles promoting false ideas is not even exist not even close in the religion look here with me God makes his desire perfectly clear however human being have a free will to please or displease God what a big fat lie what a big fat lie isn't it Muhammad being ordered to kill all mankind until they convert to Islam to kill not only to fight because fight here is about fighting by the sword and sword kill not fighting by words or debate look how they lie to you read with me all those hadith in the front of us is about killing anyone who don't believe in Islam oh and the condition is not only to convert to Islam read carefully with me please not it's not enough even to convert to Islam not to be killed because you might convert to Islam and still be killed because read with me carefully free will are you kidding me what a big fat liars you are the one who made this article trying to deceive those naive Western African Asian people Allah messenger said and the one is talking here is Allah messenger not a Christian Prince and this is Sahih al-Bukhari this is a true authentic hadith said by Muhammad and the reference in the front of your eyes read it please with me Allah messenger said I have been ordered to fight the people the people all people oh no not the limit tell till what till they stop fighting me you know stop attacking me no until they have peace with no till they say tell they say so what is the condition to stop fighting the people is the following number one you say what you say the Shahada and then you say after they say so they have to pray like we pray it's not enough you're not done yet now you say shahada this is the first step the second step is you have to pray as we pray otherwise I will kill you still and not only that even if you pray you have to pray facing our Qibla which means direction of the Qibla and not only that facing the Qibla is not enough still not to slaughter you you have to slaughter as we slaughter which means slaughter meat and food as we eat and then and only then their blood and the property will be secured from who from us 
so how you say to me a free will and you are free and whoa what is that man two Muslims have a shame when they make those articles you see when Muslims write those articles I don't know who you are the one is listening many of you they listen to me always and many of you are in you Muslim don't respect you and the proof is in the front of your eyes article is full of lies they think you are a fool they think by an article they can fool you and make you believe in such a garbage which one we will believe what Muhammad said or what an article said they lie to us they say Islam always attack those who attack us read carefully with me I've been ordered to attack to kill all mankind until they do the following and the following and the following and if they do that even even after they do all of this if they break any of my conditions i will kill them look what it says hmm? will be secured to us and will not interfere with them except if they broke what is legal in islam so even if you convert and you pray and etc if you do something not what is legal you leave islam you don't pray like them you don't stutter like them if you break any of those you will kill you this is why some stupid uh, uh, Western uh, uh, like uh, uh, Muhammad James White if you know him the stupid Muhammad James White who claimed to be a Christian priest or minister he keeps saying that Isis is not Islam but this is Muhammad is Muhammad Isis Muhammad saying if you don't pray to the Kaaba we kill you if you don't pray we kill you if you don't slaughter like we slaughter we kill you if you don't pay the cat we kill you so what do you mean Isis is not Islam in order to say Isis is not Islam you have to say Muhammad is not Islam too and Isis they practice exactly as Muhammad said read with me here this is different hadith different reference and it is authentic too all right read carefully it's the same story the message of Allah in order to fight the people until they testify that there is none to worship but Allah and Muhammad is the message of Allah to say Shahada and until they establish the Salah and pay the Zakat you have to pay him money too it's not enough actually there's a war it's called the war of apostate you can go and search it right now Abu Bakr he waged a war because people they refuse to pay Zakat it's about money by refusing to pay zakat, you are considered to be an apostate. As simple as that. Your blood is free. And Abu Bakr, he said, I swear by Allah, I'm going to wage war on them, even if the zakat was a price of a goat, little goat. They have to pay me. Because Islam is only about money and sex and power. So if they do that, if they have that then they will gain the protection from me for their lives and their property muhammad is a demon muhammad is a gang muhammad is the mafia you see those mafia uh, movies where they come to a store they say we give you protection pay us this is the jizya actually the the mafia the mafia business was learned by the people of Malta and the Italian because of the Islamic invasion to Europe when the Arab was kicked out the criminals took over and they practice what the Arab used to do the Arab they used to collect the jizya they forced you to pay them as a protection so we kicked the Arab out the Muslims out and then we get and the mafia criminals taking over the business because they learn from the Muslims how to do this gang business and this is Muhammad the gang leader and yet in the article they say to us you are afraid to believe or not to believe I don't know if I want to continue talking it's going to take me two days to finish this topic but I think we made the point and the point is so clear that this cult is a very disgusting and deception is a way of life in Islam I never saw anyone believe in any any religion regardless if it's a cult or not 
lie as someone as he believe in Islam they have no shame to lie please download my videos and share them with your friends this video maybe it's long yes it's long but the purpose of having long so we can cover as many we can and still really we did not cover much as you see like we are here what for uh, uh, more than three hours four hours I'm not sure so still we did not cover much this is a very evil cult and I need your help guys please help me help yourself help your children's by spreading the truth I don't want you know I know like I appreciate people who help uh, you know they tell people about my books or they make donations that is a help I really appreciate but there's bigger help is to help yourself and how to help yourself by saving your society from this cult the Muslims are targeting your children to convert them targeting your society to convert them to Islam and any society will turn into Islam is going to turn into an evil person like Muhammad do you want really to have a society believe in this garbage in the front of you on the screen that we have to fight everybody until they practice this and this and this and if they practice that even if they break any of those like if we don't pray we kill them if they don't pay zakah we kill them if they don't do you want that so don't wait until it's too late they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to deceive people and to spread Islam in your countries and what we do here is a priceless and sadly very few people support what we do however the Lord is our supporter in everything we do and he always make us meet the good ones you know during my trip here I met really an amazing people and there is many many more they want to see me but sadly I cannot see everybody because some people they are scattered all over and you know far away but it's really amazing how much you receive like uh, the, the the place I am in right now uh, I'm a guest in a house uh, they were so happy to have me very very you know I, I'm not going to describe how uh, how beautiful the people I met they are really beautiful uh, yesterday we went out I mean those people they are great they are I, I cannot explain I can't explain really how how happy they are even to sit with me so I'm blessed by having you all of you and really I have a family and my family is bigger than you can imagine and that is the family of the Messiah the Christ the family of love wherever you go those people they provide you with love for all the love is coming from one his name is the Messiah the Lord the Savior he is the one we need not someone like Muhammad want to force people to believe and to eat and to drink the way he want to slaughter as he slaughter to pray as he want you to pray this is not from God this is absolutely from the devil shedding blood war fight killing hate cannot be from God peace and love is from God and that is what the Messiah the Messiah said the blessed those who spread peace Muhammad obviously is against peace Islam itself it does not mean peace it means to surrender which means Islam mean war and then yet they lie to us they say Islam mean peace this is how much deception we have in our society and again nobody dare to say the king is naked but I am Christian Prince I say Muhammad today is naked and we expose him and he is very evil and we will not stop exposing him until we are sure or me I am sure that there's nothing more I can do I will do this until the last second of my life and nothing will stop me not even death because even after death my books will stay my videos will stay is going to stay and nobody can stop us the knowledge we share is going to stay and people they will live with it and they will deliver it from generation to generation but this is need a teamwork you know let us all of us get the blessing of the Lord you know if you if you teach somebody about Islam and you save him from this cult you get a blessing from the Lord one day one day you will stand in the front of him and he will ask you what you did what you will say you will say I was just uh, eating uh, shish kebab and making money and have a family that's not enough my friend you have you have to save 
help others you know this is what life is about the joy of life is to be someone to be something not to be just a number many people they came to life and nobody remember them there's two ways to be remembered either to be evil or to be good and good is not about being good for yourself it's about being good to others this is why you see the Messiah he never speaking about being good to yourself as much he's speaking about being good even to your enemy that is the message of the Messiah for God is good you better be good God is good for he have the nature of good when somebody says to Jesus you are good the Messiah said why you call me good only God is good the Muslim they got it wrong they say oh he's saying he is not God the fact he is saying why how you know me I'm good the Messiah he said many times I am the good shepherd I am the Alpha I am the Omega I am the beginning I am the end the Muslim they say to you why Jesus is God it doesn't make sense how God how Jesus can be God but he is or son of God and he is being crucified if this is a reason then you should believe in Jesus as God before us because according to the Quran Jesus wasn't was not a crucified this is how hypocrite their logic and this is how false it is so then let the fool fool you you are smarter God gave you a brain use it I am here just to help you but not to think for you think with me use your brain I'm sure many of you are even smarter a lot smarter than me and you can do better with this I want to say thank you may the Lord bless you all and remember to be with us around 8 o'clock today p.m. if I could not do live protection product like broadcast in my channel then you click at the link under this video where you will see a link for the page of brother Amir where I'm going to broadcast from his page then if I could not do it in my in my uh, uh, you know computer so with this I want to say thank you God bless Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again Bye-bye.